Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hungry People Podcast, the hungriest podcast in America. It is your boy, Michael Patrick Buckley, and I'm my co-host, AJ Dybka. It's my honor today to welcome back to the podcast, Josh Buchanan. We had Josh early on, uh, and I think he was our first interview for the podcast. Uh, and it's honestly an honor and a blessing to have you back on. Josh is uh, full of knowledge. Uh, he really takes his health seriously. And um, it's really great to just have you here again, Josh. So thanks for coming on. Thanks um, for and, me. Yeah, of course. And we're going to dive in today to, to talk more about uh, why people go ex vegan. And uh, this is just, it's just a really important topic that, uh, that needs to be talked about. And not many people are talking about it. Um, so we really want to dive deeper, <laughs> even deeper. We were like, we were like nine feet deep. Now we're going like 15 feet deep tonight today, sorry, this morning <laughs> to talk about uh, why people go back to vegan. So um, we're really, really happy to do this again. So AJ, what's going on, my man? Oh, great intro, MP. I'm happy to be here. Looking forward to this discussion. I think we're going to nail it. I think people are really going to appreciate it. It's an important topic. So let's get right into it. First, we're going to start with the mission statement of Hungry People for all of you who are new to the podcast. The mission of Hungry People is to educate, entertain, and inspire people to better themselves and enrich the lives of those around them. And this podcast is going to hit on all of those points today. So I want to welcome back, Josh. Second, first time for a guest to come back a second time. The highest honor you could have, Josh, welcome <laughs> to the podcast. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, let's get into it. Josh, you had listened to the episode actually before we released it because you reached out to MP and it turned out we had just recorded one on this topic. So you actually listened to it and you wrote down 15 points. So kind of um, what did you think of the episode that uh, the last week's episode? And then can we dive right into the first point that you made? Sure. Yeah, it was good. Like, yeah, I, I messaged MP to discuss it. And, and uh, coincidentally, you guys had just recorded an episode on it. And I figured like, I always have, like, I like what you guys say and I always have my input. I figured once he mentioned that uh, you guys made an episode, I'm like, ah, oh, well, they probably covered it really well. There's not much <laughs> I can add, but, but MP was really interested in having more conversation on it because it's such a big topic. So yeah, totally. Um, and it's, it's a topic that I've wanted to discuss for a long time. Like I don't make videos. I don't have my own podcast or anything, but there's a couple of people I know that do and, mm -hmm. or we're planning to, and I was wanting to have that conversation because it is a really important conversation, but yeah, yeah, I just never got around to it. So. Yeah, totally. And I feel like with this topic, it's it's not it's never going to be an ending. You know, there's always going to be people who go on the journey. Journey. I feel like when you say journey, it's like a journey is meant to end. Um, yeah. But there's going to be people who do it, and then they're going to stop doing it. You know, even still on Twitter, I'll see people uh, even recently of like the vegan diet made me sick. I was dying. I was it was horrible. It's just <laughs> like, and they just totally shit on it and. It's kind of sad to see. I mean, it's obviously it's sad to see them go through what they're going through, but um, clearly they, they didn't plan it properly. So, yeah, um, it's a really complicated topic. So, yeah, hopefully this breakdown will yeah, totally. help a little bit. Mm -hmm. But hey, before we get into the first uh, point that Josh has written down, and he wrote, he wrote down 14, uh, 15 points. 15. Uh, that's why we're having 15 feet today. <laughs> um, but uh, we actually wanted to discuss... Uh, what being vegan is and what the definition of veganism is. Um, and I can just, I can just start with what, it, what, what I believe it to be. I mean, I think it, it or not, I think I know it's, it's an ethical and moral stance yeah. against uh, the abuse um, of animals. And you really, uh, I mean, obviously like it's not eating certain, it's not eating all animal products. So you exclude those for your diet, but it's really having a stance on that to protect them and to, ensure that they don't get killed for us to eat so um now obviously there's a there's a legitimate definition but <laughs> um that's just my I, take on it i i think it really depends who you ask and that's why i think it's good for us to kind of share yeah our perspective um aj what do you think about that <clears throat> yeah I, mean, I think um <clears throat> for the environment for the so mainly i think it's the animals that come first in my opinion like how they're treated because they are the victims and then the environment is probably another factor that i think if you're putting if you're using it in like a selfless way and mm -hmm. um you're thinking about you know other people or the animals those two kind of trump the health stuff because i do think you can 
eat animal products and still be healthy. But obviously if you just only eat animal products, I think that that's a lot more challenging, but anyway, that's kind of the order for me of importance when it started, it was actually flipped. So when I first started, it was like more about the health and then the environment and, and the animals last. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's animals and morals first, because you can be on a, eating a, a diet that's exclusively plant foods and have it not be healthy. And yeah. you could be eating a diet that includes animal foods and still be healthy, I think. So yeah, to me, that's not the main focus, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, my definition of um, veganism is similar to what MP said. It's a moral position. It's a moral mm-hmm. stance that says that humans should not cause any unnecessary harm, death or suffering to innocent animals. Yeah. Who really have so, no control. They're just, they're kind of just there. Yeah. Well, um, actually, <clears throat> as much as, sorry, intentional. I want to add that intentional harm, suffering or death. Right, right. And the thing is like, we, we breed the animals and create, we create their lives for themselves and their suffering. But I actually want to just highlight something. I think that Josh should come back at some point and we should do an episode uh, that really dives deep into animal ethics and animal rights. And I know we're going to touch on it a lot in this, but I'm always open to doing that as well. Mm-hmm. If you guys are interested. Yeah. yeah just, just make me the, uh, the featured host, the, <laughs> the third wheel guy that knows when I'm available sounds good <laughs> yeah totally totally yeah no i'd love to do that um it's funny because i actually wanted to ask a question but maybe i'll wait for that episode to ask it then <laughs> sure okay so cool yeah are let's, you guys uh, ready to jump into it yeah let's, let's get into let's, that let's list sure i just yeah. i left it behind me i'll just grab it one sec yeah yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah this is going to be cool because i feel as though josh really thinks nice. deeply about these things whereas i was just saying random stuff that's on the top of my yeah, head well so. it just he cares you know, he, yeah. he cares and um, he has a clear interest in this and uh, and he's been here for a while. So, yeah, Josh, how long have you been vegan? Uh, over five years. Nice. But but I, you know, got my foot in the door with it like 2014. So mm-hmm. eight years, eight years is when I started, you know, experimenting with it and, and right. thinking about it and everything. And over five right. years now, like officially. Nice. Nice. Well, they say that you don't start deteriorating until six this year six. So <laughs> yeah. So, you, so you're you're good for now. Yeah, this is my this is your last year. <laughs> I, I'm in I'm in I'm in end stage veganism right now. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I have so I have the list of 15. Like I made actually I made 12 before I listened to your podcast. And oh, then I added mm. three from you guys. So some of this is, is stuff you guys have talked about already, but we'll mm-hmm. kind of cover it again and add some different perspective Mm -hmm. but uh for me yeah it's just like it's a complicated topic because a lot of people don't understand the definition or they don't know why they're doing it or some people think it's it's for health and it is healthy some people think it's unhealthy like there's Mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of different ways to look at it so Mm -hmm. um yeah so start out here i got my list of 15 so i'm gonna go kind of in in order from least significant to most significant although I, i didn't put too much thought into it just near the bottom there are some ones that i know seem to be the most important or that I come across the most. Yeah, totally. And for me, so as I said, I kind of got started in 2014, but didn't commit until the beginning of 2017. Mm-hmm. And part of that was like, my attitude was, okay, I think this makes some sense to me, but prove to me that being vegan is the right thing to do. I needed to be convinced. I needed to hear the arguments. Mm-hmm. And eventually it's just like, I don't have an excuse anymore. I have to do it. It makes too much sense to me. It aligns with me too much. Right. And now not so much in the last year or two. I haven't been paying as much attention to to the vegan stuff in the vegan community, but you know, like 20, maybe 2019, 2018 around there, I was kind of of the other perspective. It's like, now I've made up my mind, convince me that I'm wrong. So I was actually watching like ex vegan videos. It's like, give me a good argument. Like I want to, if I'm wrong, I want to know. And I just couldn't find any good arguments. So that's just the way my, my mind is like, I'm very logical and uh, you know, looking for just truth seeking and stuff. Yeah, totally. I think the thing is too, is with, um, with a lot of the ex vegans, there's flaws in what they have to say. And I firmly believe that they're lying about, not that they're lying, but they're probably, they're, um, they're probably just buffing up some of the stuff they're saying. Like, I I don't, I don't believe it all to be true. You know, that's just how I see it. I, my outlook is like, everyone's acting like it's so black and white and maybe in a lot of instances it is, but like you said, they might be lying. They might be 
you know, not even understanding what they're saying true, like fully. So I feel as though there's so much more gray and there's so much more uh, yeah. nuance to what's being said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's actually one of the, the, um, one of the things on my list is just too black and white, but mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, we'll, we'll discuss a lot of that here, but um, mm -hmm. starting with number 15. So I guess just kind of what we're covering is why do people fail when they try and go on a exclusively plant-based diet? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you can call that a vegan diet to me. It's kind of complicated because like you can go on a vegan diet without being a vegan because vegan expands beyond what you eat. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Like you, you can't call yourself a vegan because you're eating a vegan diet when you're buying leather and fur and stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so yeah, this is why 15 reasons why people fail on a exclusively plant-based diet. Number 15 is discomfort because it's a big change and that happens in anything, right? Anytime you make a big change in your life, there's discomfort. And a lot of people just don't like that. Even for example, right now, like I've been trying to learn some Spanish and it's uncomfortable. It's a lot yeah, more comfortable fine. if I just find English speakers or use a translator. Like mm -hmm. if you want growth, if you want change, if you want to make, you know, have live a different way, there's, there's going to be discomfort with that. And some people, you know, just they, they can't handle the discomfort and they'd rather go back to their default. Right. And I, do, yeah, you, do you think there's like levels to that discomfort that become a, not um, almost like not a good, not a good pursuit? Like if you throw yourself in the deep end and you haven't been used to it, do you feel as though there's like a ceiling with that or like a certain amount of discomfort that's healthy versus some that's just too much too soon? Cause yeah, you, absolutely. even yourself said you experimented for a little while before committing to it. Yeah. For me, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't jump full in right away upon coming across it. Like I was experimenting and listening to different perspectives and things like that for quite a while. So by the time I actually committed to it, I felt like I, I pretty much had it figured out. So the adjustment yeah. wasn't that difficult. Um, but yeah, and, and that depends on the person and depends on the situation because you can jump full in. And if you have really good support, that's going to make it easier. Whereas mm -hmm. if you jump full in, you don't know anyone that's been doing that. You don't really have any resources. You don't really know what you're doing. That's going to make it way more difficult. Right. Right. And I can also see it being uncomfortable when you and causing discomfort in yourself um, from even like a family and friends perspective, you know, it's yeah. like being around them. And now they're like questioning you about every, every decision you're making, everything you're eating, everything you're putting in your body. It's not, it's not yeah. fun dealing with that. It's not, right. <laughs> it's, it's more of an annoyance. So I can definitely see that being uncomfortable for a lot of people and they might not even want to deal with that. So it's right. like, it's almost easier just to, to stop. Um, exactly. But and actually, I, yeah. uh, Dr. Lyle, when he talks about people transitioning into plant more plants or eating healthier, he says to not even let anyone know what you're doing. <laughs> Like, just like, just yeah, start doing it and just be like, ah, I actually don't feel in the mood to eat the meat today and just play with it and not make it like there's a sign over your head, like I'm vegan, because then yeah, all of a sudden right. you get yourself into the ego trap. Yeah. And You're if anything played off like, oh, this is maybe, maybe this won't work, but I feel pretty good. So I'm just going to keep going with it. Not make it this, you know, concrete thing. Right. Yeah. Don't blast it everywhere when you're starting out. Like, you know, keep it low key. I've gone to restaurants with people and ate in front of them and they didn't realize I was vegan. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't I, I'm, I've never been like super, super, um, vocal about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm starting to learn that too. Even still like with talking, uh, to like some girls, I don't like, I don't just like say like, Hey, I'm vegan. You know, I'd rather like, yeah. if we, for whatever reason, if we did happen to go on a date, I would just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I would just like eat, I would just order what I would order. And then, you're like maybe they, they, maybe they'll question it, but I just like keep it on on the DL on the low. Yeah, it's just um, one one characteristic about you, right? It's it's not it doesn't define you. It's just yeah. But I feel like hard. it can be a turnoff there for some people. They're like, oh, you're you yeah, like. It can be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think? You're better than me, huh? <laughs> I think being vegan can be a turnoff for some, and then being vocal about it can be a turnoff for some. Yeah. Too, right. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah like you said mp like that discomfort right. can come from any area it's, it's yeah. the discomfort of making a big change in your life it's the criticism it's the learning a different way to eat it, it, it can be very uncomfortable right so that's number 15 right. uh that's cool. the first one any you guys have anything to add to that one uh, i think All we covered good. it yeah okay. nice point there josh thanks uh number 14 you guys covered this the uh it's inconvenient right like a lot of restaurants don't have vegan stuff it's 
you know, if you're eating with friends, it's, it's difficult when you're traveling, maybe, you, you know, the places in the grocery stores back home. And then when you travel, it's like, well, I don't know where to find this stuff. So there definitely is a level of inconvenience mm -hmm. looking at labels. Maybe when you go to restaurants, asking if they can uh, alter things for you and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really tough too, because it, it's hard to just question every little, every little thing, every little ingredient too, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, I think in some, uh, in some beans, there's like lard in some of the, yeah. in some of the beans and, and it's like, beans, yeah. yeah, it's like, I'll go to a Mexican restaurant and I'm like asking these questions and they're and they're, it's like, they don't even know how to answer the question because they can't even speak right. English. Yeah, so, yeah. um, I guess, I guess the point would be like, just don't get the beans then, you know, sorry, just double up on the rice or something else. Um, but yeah. still, um, I feel like most people wouldn't want to do that. They, they, they'd rather just go and they'd rather just order and then that's it, you know, nice and easy. Yeah. Whereas like, oh, like when I can order, oh, here goes MP and everyone's staring at me like, oh my gosh, what's he going to, what's he going to eat? What's he going to get? What kind of questions is he going to ask right now? It's like, dude, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, relax, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> well, I, I feel as though the three of us could, could have easily lost sight of how challenging this specific topic would be for like this specific point would be for yeah. other people because we've all eaten pretty simple as vegans. Like we eat fruit during the day, starch at night or raw at night too. Like pretty simple for me when I was raw. I mean, when I was vegan, I just ate bananas all day, like 20 bananas and ate a bunch of rice at night. So I wasn't running into the issue of like going out to eat all the time or right. hanging out with tons of people and having vegan food. And we all eat pretty simple, like potatoes, fruit, rice, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though there's a lot of people like my ex-girlfriends, they love like fine dining. They love the variety. They love like piscotti and all this kind of garbage mm -hmm. that I couldn't care less about. Right. But for those people, those points are important. So I feel as though it's a lot more challenging like this point for other people than it is for us, even, even though it is inconvenient for us too, on a smaller yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Especially for me starting out, like the reason I got into it is because I was having health issues and I was doing elimination diets and stuff. So I was mo mostly eating at home and eating simple for that reason. Nice. Yeah. But it, like you made a good point too. If you're traveling, it's a lot harder to read food labels. When I was in Poland, it was a little more challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even just find the stores and restaurants, like, you know, if you're staying somewhere, you, you find those places. But if you're passing through a new city for a few days, it's hard to maybe track down right. what you like. And, and, the, that's, and that's why it's important to plan it properly or to at least, at least have so many, or not so many, but like you at least have options and backup plans in yeah. your mind and, and, on your, on your table, just so you, just so you're ready to go, you know? Yeah. And one thing for me is I've traveled so much now that I have different options. I kind of take what the market gives me, you know, in this country, they have a lot of this, but they don't have this. So, you know, I eat what they do have or what's priced afford, uh, affordably. And, and I've just right. done that so much that I, I'm not stuck to one really specific way of eating. I can, right. I can give up all these foods and go with these ones if I'm in whatever mm -hmm. country, you know? Well, it's funny you say that, Josh, because you made a really interesting and, um, and what's the word I'm looking for? You, it was just a really good point because you were talking to me about like eating fruit and uh, you're like, oh, well, like where I am now, the fruit quality isn't that good. So I'm drinking juice instead to replace my calories. Um, yeah. So it wasn't like, it wasn't like you were saying, oh, like I'm drinking this juice because like I had to drink this or because, um, or whatever reason, uh, but you drank because it was like the best option for you at that time. And it was potentially yeah. your own not not your only option but you're probably your best uh, yeah so i thought that was a gotta really be, great point you made got to be adaptable like you know I, I love durian but when i'm in the u.s canada south america i don't eat durian like yeah maybe <laughs> once once in a while it's too expensive when i'm in malaysia and indonesia i go hard you know <laughs> <laughs> like you just, yeah you, you have to be adaptable and definitely take what the market gives you right 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 <laughs> Um, any other points on that? So that's number 14, inconvenient. Pretty good. Okay. Next one, number 13. You guys cover this one as well. It's expensive. And to me, pretty much the answer to everything is it depends. It can be very expensive. It can be very cheap. A lot of the cheapest foods are vegan. So mm -hmm. it's, are, are you, are you going to expensive restaurants that are exclusively vegan and buying, you know, the more kind of processed food or organic or buying durian all the time in the U S or are you mostly, you know, using um, foundational foods like rice and, and beans and lentils and oats and bananas and stuff like that? Because it, it can be extremely cheap if you want it to be. 
Yeah. I was spending um, $9 a week at one point eating whole food plant based, something crazy like that. Like wow. huge, Wait, what? Bag of, huge bag of brown rice and like some fruit juice. And that's what I ate for like two weeks. And I felt yeah. amazing. I felt amazing. This was like five years ago. And I was yeah. like, holy crap, this is so cheap. And then the girlfriend comes back from, <laughs> from vacation. It's like, all right, let's spend $300 a week again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it, it's, it's all how you do it, right? It's, it's potatoes too. It's like uh, another comparison would be like with traveling. When people look at me, it's like, how do you afford to travel like that? But in their mind, they're doing like the one week all inclusive. You know, I, yeah, I right. paid $2,000 $2, for a 10 day trip. It's like the way I travel, I don't have to spend that much, you know? Right. So yeah. it's, it's how you do it. Speaking of durian, I did, um, I went down to Tennessee two years ago and my cousin Cody doesn't have any like Asian markets where he's at. So he asked me to bring some durian and I got two of them. It was like $250 or something like yeah. really, you know, it adds up for sure. See, I like, mean, I if don't you're do do, unless you're doing bananas, like fruit can easily get expensive, but then also so can anything else. You know, if I'm yeah. eating cooked vegan or raw vegan, they're about the same. I generally spend around the same amount of money. It's almost worth it just to fly to Malaysia because they have all you can eat durian buffets for seven US dollars. So, Dude, that's insane. Have you been to that New York one, that New York buffet? No, I haven't. But when I was in you Malaysia, guys... I went I went three out of four nights. I was there. Oh, wow. I've heard of the New York one though, and I've seen pictures. Yeah, they have the Musan so, King. You know, I want to go this year. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. I've never been. I got I got a Musan King in Malaysia for free because I beatboxed the Chinese New Year song. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I, I have a video of it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gong shini song so yeah but that one yeah, that's it, it depends <laughs> can be super expensive can be super cheap it's about your mindset how right. are you doing it anything to add to that one dude a grass-fed steak like this big is like 20 bucks so. <laughs> exactly yeah yeah and and it's funny because i want to like not that i want to create this this sort of diet but i I, I want to like put it on social media and be like, this is the peasant diet. It's bananas. It's dates. It's rice. It's beans. It's romaine lettuce. It's tomatoes. That's like potatoes and potatoes too. You could say that's like almost right there. That's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, get, and maybe get, some berries, maybe some berries too. We'll throw some berries in there. Some frozen berries. Like get creative with that stuff and, and use some seasoning and stuff. Yeah. Know? Like legit. You could, you could eat, you can eat those. You can take those seven or eight items and be, fine for the rest of your life yeah. that's and that's what i would like to call the peasant diet baby <laughs> sorry i only eat mono meals no spices <laughs> I'm just kidding. um but yeah i mean really like those items right there are all super cheap and super full of nourishment yeah and calorie so, dense too but i also want to highlight i don't think it's a, i i personally think it's not a problem to spend a lot of money on food i'll happily spend it i want to spend yeah. money on what feels good so if it's more expensive i'm fine with spending it i don't need it to be the cheapest obviously it creates a lot more financial freedom if it's more affordable for sure but for me the yeah. highest uh my highest value is feeling as good as i can okay jay having those high and, standards uh, and that's fine to me it's uh, like it's up to you the point is it doesn't necessarily need to be expensive. So if people are using yeah. that as an excuse, they're, they're missing the mark a little bit and they're just right. coming up with an excuse. Well, I, I do want to dive a little deeper. Are you guys aware of this guy, Sweet Natural Living on yeah. YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I think he's good content. I, I like a lot of the stuff he says. I think his stuff on fruit is pretty good. Norwegian um, guy, was, right? What's that? Norwegian guy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Bobby's perspective is he the runner? did it. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a runner. Okay, okay. I, I know Bobby's perspective did a video on him and he was uh, going through like what he eats in a day currently. And he had like 85 supplements or something. Like it was just crazy amount, like healthy and nine, like just going through. He had to just bring it out, out of his bag because he's like, this is, if you're vegan, you know, this is a problem. If you're vegan, blah, blah, blah. And Bobby was saying like, oh, so he's taking pretty much like these 16 supplements just because he's vegan. When if he just did have the steak, he wouldn't be taking these. Do you guys have thoughts on that? I thought it was like, I want to discuss that more because I feel as though it's an oversimplification. And at the same time, a lot of those supplements probably wouldn't even be necessary to take. That seems very excessive to me. Like what 16 nutrients can't you get from a vegan? To me, it's like, pretty much just b12 maybe one or two other ones like yeah Gosh, i don't may, yeah maybe at some point i can send it to you guys and you can check it out and see yeah what you think. yeah i, would I love used to watch his stuff a lot 
Um, Bobby's yeah. perspective. Sorry, Hampi, go ahead. No, go, no, no, go, 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 please, please, please. Uh, so uh, I was saying early on, like, I don't really watch this stuff anymore. I used to, so I know both these guys, like Bobby's perspective. I used to watch him a little bit, but I don't, to put it politely, I don't jive with what that guy's putting out and the way he, he uh, presents himself. Sweet Natural Living, he had some good stuff. I'm surprised he's taking that many supplements so i'd have to right. check that out for that yeah, that's weird. well he, he says it's because he leaned away from more of a fruit-based diet and he is doing more starch and stuff so he's almost like oh. overly worried oh. and he also had an injury so he's trying to like mimic you know whatever he can to try to heal as best he could i was just okay. surprised that he did pull out that many supplements and i feel as though there's plenty the reason i bring it up there's plenty of people who are vegan who think they have to take so much extra you know steps because they're not eating meat and they do take a lot of supplements. Now, personally, I think a lot of supplements, a lot of different supplements can be really good. Like I love enzymes. I love hydrogen stuff like that. But there's a lot of people who are just scared of being vegan and think they have to take vegan supplements all day long. And I know that you guys disagree with that. And I want to bring that up. See, but AJ, would you consider that a supplement though? You know, like enzymes, it's it's a specific need the body has to meet. And sometimes we're depleted of that. So like, yeah. yes, it might be a supplement, but it's also, uh, it's also encouraging plenty of bef- benefits in the body. Yeah. But I mean, I guess technically it is, I mean, you, you, you get what I'm saying now. Right. I was you just, know? I was just saying that even though I back a lot of different supplements, there's a lot of overhype on like, if you're vegan, you have to take all of these supplements. That's kind of what I was getting at. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't see it. And yeah, it depends what it is. Like there's supplements and there's nutritional supplements. Like I don't think there's 16 nutrients that you need to supplement because you can't get them from a vegan diet, vegan diet. I don't take any supplements whatsoever, except for B12 for over five years now. And that's, I mean, we could get into that, but that's maybe another episode. Like I don't, yeah, right. B12 isn't, isn't a problem necessarily with a vegan diet. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Um, and just to answer your question, AJ, about this, and like my thoughts on it. Um, I know mastering diabetes, I remember them posting one day and they even said like, we don't supplement anything. All we do is take, or besides B12, um, yeah. but we just eat, we eat our food, we eat our supplements. You know, we eat our, our nutrition. That's where we get it from. We don't get it from a supplement. And it's funny because I feel like people do come to this diet, this way of eating. I don't, I don't want to say diet, this way of eating. And um, they, they think like, oh, I, I like got to take all these different supplements and stuff like that. But I mean, you just simply put, like, you don't really have to. And I, I think McDougal would um would would argue against supplementing too. I'm not sure. I, I think oh, yeah. I think there's some videos on that. Um, yeah, for but, sure. Um, I I feel like he's sort of against it. And he'd rather eat see the people eat the food instead. And then like if yeah. if you need a supplement, then do it. You know. Um, but yeah, I mean, even still, uh, that's why like getting some diversity and getting some nutrient dense foods other than just like eating so high carb is important. You know, like getting your greens in and eating some vegetables too. <laughs> Oxalates. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to throw us off topic or off point too much, but I think that that's another episode we could always have together where we really go through like deficiencies and people's uh, worries about a vegan diet and stuff. I think that would be a really interesting episode, mm-hmm. especially because I just listened to Simon the plant proof guy on rich rolls yeah. and they're going through like being an athlete and creating strength on a plant-based diet. And they really go through and hit a lot of those points. I think that we could do something very similar. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Is there anything else? Are we ready to move on to the next point? Yeah. I'm ready for the next point. If you guys are. Yeah. Yeah, let's do so it. that was uh, number 13, right? Yeah, this, yeah, more than 12. Uh, next one, 12 peer pressure. I think you guys covered this a little bit too. I mean, that's, that's how it goes. I've experienced it. Like I, I've had good friends that are kind of like, sometimes jokingly, sometimes more seriously and giving me a hard time about it. And, you know, some people fold under that type of pressure or, you know, family members, grandparents kind of like giving them a hard time and you don't want to be an inconvenience. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to be a, a target for criticism. Right. Agreeable people. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's also, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's definitely a peer pressure for people to get back to eating and our products, hundred percent, hundred percent. Uh, and even still, someone commented on my post the other day and they're saying like, oh, um, you know, I've been vegan for 11 years and I've seen all these ex-vegans and I have some health issues and it's really making me questioning all this stuff and oh, I just don't know what to do. And it's just like, what do you say to something like that? Like, hey, I, I mean, I hope you feel better. I hope you hear your issues and stuff. Um, 
but I was like questioning back what she was saying as well. Um, but still it's like the, the peer pressure is huge, you know, yeah. well, and the um, peer pressure is magnified. If you don't have great results, if you feel great and you look great, it's a, you shake it off so easily. Right. But yeah. like you said, if you're kind of like feeling down, maybe you don't look the best and you're like, oh, you can question it a lot more because you're getting it bombarded into your head. Right. Right. Yeah. Those are actually great points. AJ. <laughs> I remember too, there's one post going around on Instagram saying like 85% of people who give up meat end up going back to eating meat or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's like, I bet you all those, all those people went 10, 20, 30, 40 years of their life with eating meat. So they're just going back to their default. I bet you if you did a, a, an interview of people who have never eaten meat in their life, what percentage of them, percentage of them go to eating meat? You know, like someone like me, my Delgado, who has never eaten meat in his life, what are the chances of people like that switching and going to meat? It's going to be way lower. Right, right. You know, it's just falling back on your old habits in some ways or yeah, falling right. back into the, the peer pressure within your society. Mm -hmm. If we go to India and find a, a place where most people don't eat meat, it's going to be a different perspective on that. And never have never eaten meat, you know. Well said. Yeah, good point. Yeah, well said. Uh, anything to add to that one? I think we're good. I think that I think you were just 12. gonna. Oh no, get it, get it, get it. I'm good. Yeah, you good. Okay. Yeah. So that was number twelve. Peer pressure. Uh, number eleven. Uh, AJ kind of mentioned this. Uh, it's too black and white. Like I think it, it's a really a complicated topic. Um, we could really discuss a lot of different things, but yeah, people just look at it like too black and white. Like I said, yeah, some right. people think veganism is healthy. Some think it's unhealthy or uh, exclusively plant-based diet. I should say some people don't understand the difference between the moral and then uh, the way of eating and all these different things. And yeah, for me, that's, that's a big thing. Like I don't even, to be honest, I don't even care that much about veganism anymore. I care about living in alignment with my own values and my values just so happen to basically be vegan. A lot of, yeah, but, a lot of being vegan. so for me, it's like, don't support, don't engage in behavior. Don't consume things that you don't support. Like mm -hmm. just for example, when I think about this, um, I would not be comfortable killing a cow. Like if, if there was a cow and you gave me a, she a machete or whatever and said, if you want to eat beef, go kill that cow. I wouldn't be able to do it. So therefore I have no business consuming cow, whether that's in my diet or clothing or whatever. So I'm living in alignment with my morals there. And for some people, like, it really depends. Like, I think a lot of people would say they wouldn't be comfortable killing a cow, but they might be comfortable killing a fish. Therefore, it's like, okay, you don't need to be fully vegan. Just don't eat cow. Go ahead and eat fish because the idea of killing a cow is morally unsettling for you, whereas the fish it isn't, you know? So there is a whole lot of nuance to that. Agreed. And I think part of the black and white uh, issue is like with the influencers, there's a lot of influencers who are very black and white. And then there's a lot yeah. that are very, very gray. And they, yeah. so like the black and white influencers, like let's use Harley as an example during rider. He's very clear on what he recommends. So that can be really helpful to someone who needs like literal and uh, like exact steps and measures and advice, but also you can get trapped in that type of paradigm where you kind of lose your, your own insights and thoughts because you're only following somebody else. Right. But then we have over here, where everything's kind of gray and then no one understands like really actually what to do, but they have certain parameters. And I feel as though there are people who thrive with that because they take the info, they apply it to how they know uh, to use it with their own body and they figure it out and it works and they're free thinkers now with it and everything and they can evolve. But then there's tons of people who literally need step-by-step -step stuff because they just have no clue how to make it work. Yeah. And I feel like it's an individual problem as well as there is issues on both sides of that spectrum. So it's like, to me, the whole thing is gray for that exact reason. Uh, and I've experienced all of it on both ends myself. So Nice, AJ. Um, yeah, the reason why I think it's, why I think it should be more gray is because, and we might even mention this later too, uh, but I just think there's so many other factors that we have to look at besides diet, but people will just blame what they eat for all their issues. Whereas like, Oh, they're getting in fights with people at work or they just broke up with their girlfriend or boyfriend, or they're, they've been fighting with their boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, maybe they've been having some family issues, maybe just like other stressors in their life. And, um, and when we talk about all the time, sleep is a, is a big one. And uh, like people, once again, they'll blame uh, veganism, but, they were getting five hours of sleep every night for six yeah. months. And it's just like, yeah, come on. You know, it's, 
it's so it, it really isn't black and white you know there's just yeah. there's so much that goes that goes into this that yeah it, it's hard to even tell sometimes and how do, how do you even really know what the issue is even still it's like you yeah. go to the doctors and they tell you something but it's like is that even the truth i think there's just i feel like there there can be so many perspectives to look at one specific issue even in the body Right. So yeah, for me, when it comes to the ethical side, I don't want everyone to be vegan. I don't try to convince people to be vegan. I want everyone to live in alignment with their own values. And I encourage that. And we're all going to have different morals, different ethics, look at things differently. But the important thing is you are standing up for what you believe in and living in alignment with what your beliefs are. And yeah. a lot of people don't, don't do that. Yeah. But as far as the, uh, the black and white stuff too, with, with the diets and the way of eating, a way of eating, it, it is way too black and white. You guys probably know Vegetable Police, right? On YouTube, Casey. I can love that. Like, dude. yeah, I, he's a great guy. Like, I like watching him. But with his diets, he's he's too black and white. He's putting things in a box. He's like, yeah. oh, I've tried one meal a day starch. I've tried raw vegan. I've tried keto vegan. I've tried carnivore. And I've commented on his video a few times, videos a few times. And he, he probably knows this, but this is kind of his brand. It's like, stop, you know, stop categorizing all these diets. It's like, find out what works for you. It's like, Maybe the starch-based diet worked for you because you were eating too much of this one food that you're sensitive to. Maybe the carnivore diet failed for you because you weren't eating enough greens. Or what, like for me, there's, there's plant foods that I can't eat or that I don't like to eat or that when I eat, I don't feel good. So I, I avoid them. Like I, I'm a bit sensitive to wheat and pineapple. The good thing is I'm not going to be like, oh, I can't eat wheat and pineapple. Therefore, I can't be vegan. It's like, no, it's yeah. <laughs> like... I'm fine. I, I can go without pineapple and wheat. There's a million other foods I can eat. I don't have to like do this huge switch over to um, carnivore keto just because yeah, right. these two food, two plant foods don't work for me. And that's what it is for him. And I don't know if he knows it or not, but it's like, Casey, okay, you don't feel good after this. Cut that out and have something else. You feel bad morally about eating this. Don't eat that anymore. Yeah. Like there's millions yeah. of foods you can eat. You find the ones that taste good to you that you're morally in alignment with that don't create any issues for you. Like, right. Come on. Yeah. It's kind of frustrating. Yeah, totally. Um, and I think even while we're on this kind of moral slash ethical subject here, I, the, the people that always get me are the ones who are like, so in love with dogs and, and pets and, and stuff. And they're, they're, they'll see a video online of like a dog, he was on the side of a road and he was like injured and someone came and saved him. Oh my gosh, it made my day. But it's like, if you even watch a single factory farm video of how the animals are treated and what they go through, it's like, how do you not, how do you not see, like, what are you, are you just, are you just like looking through it? Is it like a ghost to you? It doesn't make, it just doesn't make a, a single bit of sense. There's a disconnect there for sure. Yeah. That's one thing that's interesting for me is that I'm not an animal lover. Like I've never mm -hmm. had pets. I've never had a dog. I've never had a cat. I don't care that much for them. Like when I see dogs walking down the street, I'm not like, Oh my God, cute dog. Like, I don't care. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I'm, but then you look at my, my circle and almost all of them are pet owners and they love pets yet at every meal, they're eating, eating. murdered animals. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's, it's funny. Not, not funny, but it's just like ironic. What are your thoughts yeah. on um, veterinarians? Like, do you think veterinarians should be vegan? Because I, I saw on Twitter the one day, it was like a veterinarian who like is carnivore and she was like really hardcore about it. Like I eat meat, I'm a veterinarian, I eat meat. It's the way, it's the way we should do it. It's just like. Ugh, it depends on their morals. Like they might be okay with, with killing animals for food, right? Like just because their job is helping them doesn't necessarily mean they have a moral dilemma with killing ones for food, I guess. So right. that's where, that's where it kind of ties back into me saying everyone should live in alignment with with their values it does seem right. like a bit of a contradiction to be someone who's helping animals and then at the same mm -hmm. time paying people to kill them so you can eat them right every day for sure yeah i th it's definitely tricky i'm not really sure i have the insights to give a good answer on that one thanks for honesty aj thanks for honesty mm -hmm. <laughs> no i mean so, i think what josh did it's is too awesome. gray <laughs> Yeah, no, it, to me, it just depends on their ethics. Yes. That's not necessarily a contradiction. It's just kind yeah. of a weird, weird overlap, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that was number 11, two black and white. Anything to add to that one? All good. Um, okay, number 10 is relationships. I've noticed this a few times where people I know or maybe just vegans on YouTube or whatever, they get into a relationship with someone who's not vegan. And then months following, they're no longer vegan. And mm. maybe it's a coincidence, but I feel like they're being influenced by 
yeah. their partner, whether yeah. right or wrong, they're, they're being influenced by that person. That's a great but point. You can see that both ways. I mean, I've dated people who yep. become vegan because I'm yep. vegan. So yeah, it goes both ways for sure. Okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And with that, it's not about right or wrong. It's that, you know, your romantic partner has a lot of influence over your life. And I think that's why oh, some yeah. of them give it up. Well, who was the one girl, um, like pretty skinny girl, like been in shape. She like did fitness videos online and stuff. Really? No, 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 Maddie no. Li- Maddie Leinbrunner? Yes, Leinbrunner? her. Yeah. Yes, her. I think, yeah. I think she, I think uh, she started dating some guy and, she, and he was influencing her. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not like hundred percent sure, but that's just what I've like. That's just hearsay. That's what I've heard. I think, I think Ravana was the same way too. And again, yeah, it, it would surprise me. Maybe, maybe it was actually a good choice for them. I'm not saying that's, uh, that's a bad thing, but I, I have observed that there's a, a connection yeah. there that it's like within the first six months of dating this meat eater, they're now going back to eating. Yeah. Right. And it, it's, cra- it's crazy too. Cause like those kind of accounts, they have such an influence on people. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. it's, it's crazy. I mean, if you've ever, I mean, I mean, I'm sure all of us even have influence on people. You know, if I was like, Oh, I'm not vegan anymore. I'm sure people would be like, dude, what the heck are you doing? Like, why aren't you? And like, they might not be, you know? So I can only imagine what those accounts are doing for other people and the impact they have on them. So it's just, it's just like crazy to think about. Anything to add to that one, AJ? Mm, I think, I think we're good. I think we covered that one. Cool. So that was number 10 relationships. Uh, number nine, lack of community. So that's a big thing. I think we just like, if you're the one person in your community that's eating vegan, it's going to be difficult. You're going to have to get comfortable being uncomfortable and going against the grain and sticking up for what you believe in and getting criticism and all those things. Whereas if, if you were in an area where you're the only one eating meat and everyone else is vegan then it's difficult to be the meat eater right yeah right <laughs> so, so like for, for me starting out i was all alone and that's largely why i went to woodstock is because i wanted to meet like-minded people right so i started out on my own and then i developed you know a good community and have a lot of friends through that and, and now i'm fine like i don't talk to my my friends back home about that stuff very much if, if i want to have those conversations it's with my my woodstock friends or whatever right so i have that support system if i need it Totally. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely important, but I feel as though for some people, it's just so much more important. Like for us, it's important, but it's not a deal breaker. Right. And for a lot of yeah. people, it's going to be that deal breaker. Uh, yeah. Woodstock. I, I actually went to Woodstock because my cousin Cody was going to go there. And then it turned out he just didn't go. And I ended up going myself and it was like, I have gone ever since. So it's really cool. To, <laughs> like you said, to actually have people to talk about these issues with, or these challenges with or insights, because otherwise, when are you going to talk about it? Other than the person, the odd person out that you run into is like, well, why do you eat that? And it's like a small, very shallow discussion. Versus something yeah. like this, you know, we're going to really freaking dive deep. Yeah. And some people are just very much people pleasers or don't like to go against the grain or make people uncomfortable. And so they give in, even though they don't want to, they give in just, just to kind of keep people happy. Right. Neurotic sissies. Uh, well, I mean, I can imagine too, that for those who do go vegan, they're probably, they probably had that feeling of being left out. If like they go to some, like your friends go to a steakhouse it's like, oh, well, I don't eat steak. So why am I going to go? You know, and then, yeah. then you feel left out. So then it, it is nice to have definitely that small community. Um, even where you live would be great too. It's like, what would you guys eat together? What would you guys do if you got invited to a steakhouse? What would, if you went, what would you eat? What would you say? How would you not feel left out? I heard this guy on Rich Roll and he was like, whenever I, cause he's a businessman. So he goes to all these luncheons and steakhouses and things to do business. And he always says to the chef or the, the waiter, I just want, you to fill up a bowl with every single vegetable you have and like give me like the biggest it doesn't matter if it's cooked or raw just like give me like this badass big green salad cooked vegetables potatoes whatever nice. and that way everyone actually like sees it and knows he's like getting full and has something to eat but do you guys right. have anything that you would do yeah yeah for me i would just call ahead in this or i would at least look at the menu and just have an idea of what i can do or at least call ahead and be like hey i'm coming in for dinner tonight i don't uh, eat dead animals. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like when you, when you, when you say it like that, it just, it like really changes the, it really changes the energy. <laughs> like, uh, I'll, like I'll be in Costco. Yeah. yeah. I'll be in Costco and they're like, Hey, you want to try this? And I'm like, nah, I don't need a dead animals. Thank you though. <laughs> and I just keep walking. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I don't like, I don't mean to be like, a, like a, like rude when I say that, but I mean, it's just, it's just like a interesting way of putting it. Um, but yeah, I would just call ahead and see if they have, uh, any options, any Six options there for myself or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but usually at, at most restaurants, they usually have 
they have something. Um, I mean, and, and to be honest, like, I wouldn't say that to the, to the, to the manager or the chef. I wouldn't say, Hey, no, I don't eat dead animals. <laughs> I would just be like, Hey, I don't eat animal products. You know, I'm vegan. Uh, what can I like, what can you guys do for me? And I'd be like, Hey, I saw on your menu that you guys do this, 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 can you put me together this? And they, they're usually pretty good about it. So. Yeah. For me, it depends on the situation. Like, is it a couple of close friends and they're, you know, they know where I stand. I would just be like, Hey, I'll come along. I'm not eating, but no worries. Like I'll sit with you guys kind of thing. If it's more of like a business meeting where I really have to go. Um, and I'd feel uncomfortable not going and not eating. Yeah. I would do what MP said, maybe call it, call in advance to see if they have something else or mm. yeah, that, that would be the difficult situation there where it's kind of less comfortable, but also necessary to go. And, you know, I'm sure most places could, could cook something up for you, especially, you know, in recent years. Right. Yeah. I have friends that actually run into this issue and it's like, you could also eat a bunch beforehand so that you, at least if you get something smaller, you don't feel like you're starving or have something prepared yeah. for after when you leave just little tips like that, I think can be actually really helpful for people. Yeah. That's a good point. Like with steakhouses too, they'll have, you know, side dishes of potatoes and stuff. So it's like, yeah, eat before you go and then just ask them for a big plate of potatoes and corn and whatever, you know, but I can hear the carcass. Like something. I hear the carcass eaters saying like watching <laughs> us right now and saying like, well, you have to make it so complicated. Just eat the steak. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like you said josh like having your own values like what's wrong with that yeah. i feel as though when they're offended if we do make it complicated it's like why are you worried what i do why yeah, are you worried yeah. if i make it complicated or not like that that's a reflection on them if anything yeah like that's i don't want to compromise my morals just for like your convenience or yeah. right cool totally. i'm ready for the next point i don't know if you guys are <sighs> yeah i'm good which cool. actually you kind of just brought this up. So that was number nine, lack of community. Number eight is people over overcomplicate it. Yeah. You know, they just, you can eat in a really simple way. And oftentimes that's actually better. Like some yeah. people just feel like for their meal, they have to have a bunch of different things or whatever. Like for me, it's simple is often better and 100%. Don't, need to, don't need to overcomplicate it. or they get too carried away with like, the nutrients and the macronutrients and all this mm -hmm. type of stuff. And then it just gets in their head too much. Right. Especially when there's more focus on those things, but not as much emphasis on feeling good. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I feel really good, but I'm worried about all these external other things or like, I don't feel that good, but at least I'm hitting my macros. It's like, well, that doesn't seem like it's a good idea. Right. Totally. Yeah. And I think, um, um, Oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but like nine times out of ten yeah simple is just gonna work better oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, the one thing that annoys me on social media is that it seems like it's the people who do the recipes who have all these different kind of crazy oh look at this uh uh cauliflower bites or something or um fried tofu that tastes like fish you know what they'll call it like vegan vegan fish it's like it's those kind of people who do those recipes they seem to get the most clout on social media, but they also, in my opinion, they make it the hardest for oh, people yeah. to be vegan. Yeah. So it's like, cool. Like they, like they're, I mean, their pages are epic. They're so they're yeah. awesome. They're great. And they deserve it. You know, they put a lot of work in it. I, I would assume it's their, probably their job. They're probably getting paid to do it. Um, Cause it seems like they put a lot of time in the videos and what they do. Um, but it's also like every recipe they have, there's just, and not everyone, but it just seems, it just seems like so overcomplicated and I don't want to, I don't want to eat like that. I don't want to have to cook all these different kind of crazy recipes every single night. I, I mean, I'll just do rice and beans. I don't care. You know, it's yeah. some romaine lettuce in there. It's whatever. <laughs> That's a very good, good point. Yeah. It's a good point. Like, yeah, they probably get a lot of followers because they make veganism look great. They make it look cool. They make it look like they're eating such an, in, in such an interesting way. And they are, right. but yeah, th at the same time, the trade-off is people think that that's how you have to eat. And it's like, exactly. oh, it takes too much time or I'm not exactly. a good cook or those ingredients are too expensive. So yeah, it's a exactly. it pays two-way street it, with that one. Yeah. It's just, it's just all about the picture you want to paint. And um, yeah. like, I think it's awesome, but I just, I, I don't want to eat like that. Yeah. For myself, I can't make veganism look cool in terms of what I'm eating. Like I, I don't eat anything too fancy. I'm not a, an exceptional cook. I keep it pretty basic. So nice. That's great. It's awesome. AJ? Oh, I'm good. I think we got it. All right. So that was number eight. People overcomplicate it. Number seven is uh, people become obsessive and orthorexic. I've seen that a lot. And I think that comes with there. just- We're still there, maybe. I don't know. 
I think that that just comes with um, a major change. And it's not necessarily that it's just when people go eat a, start eating a vegan diet that that, that happens. I'm sure there's people that go go keto or whatever and the same thing happens they just get they get carried away with yeah, what they're, they're so scared of sugar yeah like there's a lot of people who have eating disorders that are not vegan and have never been vegan it's just yeah they they get they get too into it mentally yeah it's unhealthy honestly i feel i feel a lot of that stems from um the raw vegans and not maybe not even the raw vegans but i i, I just see it a lot with the raw vegans you know like aj yeah. aj had a, a really funny <laughs> he had a really funny comment on uh on one of my stories the other day, I had like a, a vegan roll and some cashew, some cashew cheese from this nearby uh, bakery. And AJ was like, oh, your genomes are, sl- are going to be ruined. Your gallbladder is screwed. Your liver is on overdrive. Like your kidneys are going to get overworked. Like you're your just leaving. over. He's like, you're, you're destroying your health with one, with, <laughs> with that, with that food. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not kidding. I had so many comments. People were like, oh my gosh, is that kid serious? Like, is that person serious? Like, what is going on? And then I ended up, I ended up saying, like, it's just AJ. He was just joking, like, because people were like freaking out. Joking. Like, <laughs> yeah, people are too too dogmatic, right? <laughs> yeah, but like, you just can't live that way. And it, it really does create, it creates, I mean, you can if you want to, but um, it just creates, it just creates so many issues and disorders down the yeah. line and just not worth right. it. And people well, I mean, I want to, yeah. Sorry, Brios. Okay. What was that? No, uh, I was just saying uh, people feel feel guilty about eating things they really shouldn't feel guilty about. Right. Mm-hmm. Gets right. in their head too much. Well, I think that um, because MP brought up like raw veganism and seeing a lot more in the raw vegan type of uh groups and stuff like that. I think it's like there's two ways to also look at that because you got to think that veganism, raw veganism, is really going to attract certain types of personalities and certain types of people with certain types of goals. So that's one of the reasons. Like if you go to Woodstock there's not pretty much anyone there who's that closed-minded. Like if you're at Woodstock, it's an environment of open-minded people, whether that's for better or worse. They're like, oh, like fasting's great or eating a lot's great or what? They're just open to the, at least the idea of it. They're open to the stars, like telling their whole life story and all kinds of stuff, right? You're Whereas, yeah, so I think uh, there's going to be a certain level of conscientiousness that comes with certain types of groups. So you're going to go to Woodstock. People are going to be overly paying attention to their food, not only because they're raw vegan and because of that, but it's almost like it attracts that certain type of person anyway, regardless. So I feel as though like when you combine that with a lot of the potential issues of being a raw vegan, meaning like it is hard to get calories, it's hard to get good quality stuff. It can be more expensive. It can be more complicated. You have to learn how to eat more volume. Like there's all of these little nuanced things that you have to pay attention to in order to quote unquote succeed. And then it just becomes really complicated. Right. So it's like all these things intertwining at once that can make it seem like it's really basic. And it's one thing when really to me, I'm seeing a lot of these either red flags or green flags or like, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but just there's a lot more going on that meets the eye going back to the black and white thing. I was actually talking with Doug Lyle and he says like, I'm not going to name the doctors that he was talking about with me, but he was saying like, this doctor thinks that everyone can do this. Everyone can eat this way. And he's like, what he doesn't realize is yes, there's lots of people who's, who, uh, who do it. And out of, a uh, like out of all the people who even entertain the idea in the first place, it's only 1% of the people. So that other like 80%, 90%, 99% wouldn't have any, wouldn't have even ever thought that they would want to try it regardless. So mm-hmm. It's just so much more gray, in my opinion. Totally. Anything else on that one? <clears throat> that was number seven. AJ people, said it all. So people become orthorexic, oh, obsessive. Uh, number six, the next one, too extreme. People just get too extreme with the change, uh, especially relative to their history. So they go from 25 years of eating a standard American diet with a lot of junk food and a lot of animal-based products, and then they go 100% fruitarian. Like that's just yeah that's right too big of a change. That's like, oh, I, I grew up in in Brooklyn in New York City, and now I'm gonna just go live in a village in Thailand. It's like, right. Good luck. Like that's just too much, <laughs> too much of a change, you know. And some people are just like that, where they're like all in and they're kind of um, you know flip flop and right uh, impulsive and stuff. And like that's that's kind of a 
an easy way to fail, I guess, when you, you know, too much too soon or too extreme. So that I was saying that earlier, like one of the reasons why I think I've been successful with it is because I eased into it. I just didn't, right. I didn't jump right into it. I, I learned a lot. I experimented a lot. I got used to eating very simply for other reasons. So that when I did get into that, it was, yeah, it was less learning. Well, it's, it's yeah. interesting because AJ on the last episode, he mentioned, um, oh my gosh, I had another brain fart. I can't all these different. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I like, did mention well, stuff. Yeah. No. Um, you got it. Like to me, I'll, I'll let you. Uh, you can interrupt if you if you remember, but no, you you no. have to respect your you have to respect your history a little bit. You know, it's like I don't eat a super super clean diet, but I, I like I respect my history. Like I I have balance, and like I grew up on these certain foods. So for to, for me to have like some veggie burgers, I, I go for the cleaner ones. But I'm gonna eat veggie burgers. Like it's right. It, to me, it's not a big deal. Um, starting I, out, if, if you're having health issues and stuff, maybe, but I have more balance now. You, mm-hmm. you got it empty? Yeah, I remember. Uh, AJ, he's talking about how, like, oh, you know, the carnivores will make fun of the vegans for transitioning. Oh, you got to do a transition. And, and like, they, they really do do that. They really do make fun of them or make fun of us, I guess you could say, uh, to do that. And it's just like, come on. Like, I mean, show some respect, first of all. Um, even though I did go from just, omnivore to vegan like like that um but my transition wasn't like to a fruit-based diet <laughs> so uh but but yeah i mean i, I definitely believe that there is a transition period and it's good to yeah. like even if you just do f- like a t- like one or two pieces of fruit before every meal you know just to like get your body yeah. used to that because if you just throw it all in at once it's just gonna get all a whack yeah. and mess you up you do have to transition For sure. And that like, that can even just be as simple as getting used to eating more volume. If you're eating Mm -hmm. more whole food, plant-based foods, the volume is going to be greater than if you're eating highly processed animal products or just highly processed foods in general. And in in that instance, I think it's like a good idea to actually count your calories and Mm -hmm. maybe starting out, eat eat more of the processed like vegan foods because you're going to get that satiation, even if they're not the healthiest, right? You're not going to fail due to lack of calories or satiation. Right. Also too, there's people on the, on the internet who do like a vegan way of eating way too extreme, or they do juice fasting way too extreme. And then people probably feel the need that they have to do that too. Like, Oh, yeah. someone went three, six, five days on a juice fast, or they went a hundred days on a juice fast. I need to do that too. And it's just like, bro, yeah, you got to take it easy, dude. Like that's, that's <laughs> like slow. That's your roll. It's going to be okay. Like you don't have to do the extreme. <laughs> yeah. That's another one on my list too, actually. Cool. Really related to that. Nice. Well, we can get uh, the next point. Anything to add to that one? So just too extreme? Definitely uh, a lot of extreme stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah extreme with, with what they're doing as well. Not just an extreme change, but yeah. Number yeah, five. Actually, is- Josh, I wanted to talk about something real quick. I went to this sure. um, doctor two days ago, Dr. Benson used to work under Joel Furman. And he was telling me that like, um, if so, if the body's used to a certain amount of calories, so let's say it's used to 2,500 2, calories, and then all of a sudden you start training a lot. And even though your body needs the calories, even though you burn it off really easily, even though you might digest it fine and eliminate it fine, your body's only been producing a certain amount of metabolic enzymes for a while. And that's kind of like its baseline amount. So if you jump up to this certain, like if you go up to 4,000 calories, cause all of a sudden you're riding your bike a lot, he was telling me about all the metabolic stressors that that can create. And I feel as though for people transitioning and they're going from maybe really high calorie diets, like animal based and things like that, like sandwiches and cookies and whatever, then they start to eat plant-based. I feel as though that's another part of the transition. Like we got to remember that our bacteria changes, our enzymes have to like shift and change. So MP, just to clarify, like, I just want to clarify for the people out there watching uh, on the last episode, I was saying how the meat eaters will make fun of the vegans for having to have a transition period where their microbiome changes and stuff. But at the same time, when you hear what the people failing on the carcass diet, on the meat eating diet, they would be like, well, you have to eat meat for like a solid month or two months or whatever in transition. Yeah. And that's what it's like. Can we just have a little understanding that things take time, no matter what you're doing. If you start working out, it takes time to wake up your muscles and yeah. joints again, or, or whatever your brain, if you get back to school, yeah. you think the first month you're going to get sharp like that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, your, your body's going to be sore when you start exercising or, or doing a different type of exercise or stressing a different muscle, even with like the keto people, don't they have like starting out their keto fever or whatever? Like they, yeah, 
a lot of them get sick early on you know keto crotch <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i thought the, i thought the same thing <laughs> no i think i think they get like a lot of them get sick like they'll feel like they'll have a flu or fever for yeah they'll like diarrhea for like a week i mean the, then you have the raw like you know the detox world saying the same thing like i'm sick this is a great thing so it's like everyone's doing the same bullshit <laughs> on both sides, you know? all right uh number five people fail so this is not exclusive to diets or a vegan diet specifically lots of marriages fail lots of businesses fail lots of relationships fail lots of like new year's uh, resolutions fail lots of people just fail at their goals people fail all the time like so just because whatever 80 percent of restaurants fail within their first five years doesn't mean that it's not possible to be a restaurant a successful restaurant owner right so it it just it depends and and this ties into other things too like what's your community like what's your history like Mm -hmm. Are you getting peer pressure where you, all those things are going to factor into whether or not yeah. you're successful? Like it's the same thing with, with a marriage or a restaurant. It's like, did you, did you do some market research? Are you good with numbers? Like, is your food actually good? Like, what are your hours? Like all those things are going to factor into whether you're, whether or not you're successful. And it's no different with uh, eating this way or, or any other way. Right. Great point, Josh. I actually had a similar transition, like similar to you in a way, because 2013, I started hearing like started eating more fruit started just feeling so much better but by five o'clock i was eating chicken fingers and french fries because i was ravenous right so i'm having all this hydrating food feeling way better getting the carbs in but then i'm still really really hungry so at some point you know i start doing like focusing more on getting calories from those foods and it's working well but at dinner i'm still having like pizza or chicken or sandwiches or cheesesteaks or whatever and then it came to the point where I had all the info and I was like, all right, I'm going to start transitioning out of these foods. So I would have like 2000 calories of plants. And then at dinner now, like I cut out red meat and then I cut out to where I got down the vegetarian. So I have like pizza and eggs still, and then just eggs. And then I watched like a factory farm video and I was like, oh shit, like I I'll figure it out. Like I know like 95% of it, but that was a transition period, which was over seven months. And I probably could have just jumped over there, but it gave me the the understanding and the bandwidth yeah. that at least I have something to fall back on in case I do get ravenous. Right. And I feel as though that's where those mock meets and things can come in too, where it's like, yeah. you might not feel that great on them. Well, I, I know there's a lot of people who don't feel that great, but to have something so that you're not hungry and starving. Right. So, yeah. yeah I just and then with that, that too, if, if you're kind of changing one thing at a time, then if something goes wrong, you can be like, okay, well, it was probably this one thing I changed rather yeah. than going from standard American to fruitarian, like things are going to go wrong. I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. But at least you can pinpoint it when you do that type of transition. For sure. And you can highlight what actually is working so that you can put a big emphasis yeah. on that while you're fine tuning the little stuff that seems to be a little more complex. And, and with your specific situation, to me, that's pretty obvious. There's two clear problems. Number one is if you were eating a lot of fruit, you're probably not getting enough calories. That's going to make you start craving more calorie dense food. And number two is maybe starting out eating a lot of fruit. If you don't have great digestion, you might have some blood sugar issues from it. And that's going to make you feel hangry and ravenous. So those two things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the most undercard person you'll ever meet. <laughs> if I don't get any food. <laughs> Anything to add to that one? Number five, people fail. I, I just want to say, I think that was, uh, an extremely intelligent point and it's funny it's it's like it's it, it's right in our face too but i don't even think about that of how yeah. like it's so clever at the same time you know it's like it's like so easy to think of but it's so clever like hey people fail it happens it's life you know sometimes yeah. it just doesn't work um so i, I really just want to give you credit for pointing that out it's awesome thank you yeah i mean you got to set yourself self up for success in in anything you're trying to achieve right like mm-hmm. The, the better you're set up, the more likely you'll be to succeed. And right. yeah, a lot of people just fail across the board. Okay. Uh, number four, the never ending search. Um, a lot of people you know, like this ties into just being too extreme, like always fasting, always detoxing, always cleansing, always trying this new thing. And with that, it kind of, kind of varies. Like there's a fine line with that too, because I'm, I'm in the never ending search. I'm always searching for new knowledge, new information. I'm always doing some type of experiment, but you have to be careful not to go too extreme. You know, Mm -hmm. like when I started out, I had poor health. So I was doing more of the fasting, the water fasting, things like that. 
Whereas now I'm pretty stable. It's just little things. It's, you know, I, I added jogging to my routine for a month or I'll, I'll add this food or add this supplement and just kind of just test that. And then if, if it goes wrong, it's like, okay, well, I have my good foundation. I'm fine. That thing didn't work for me or that thing did work for me. And then I learned it's, I'm not doing anything crazy. And, and some people it's just like right. the never ending crazy stuff. <clears throat> yeah. And it's tricky because the more into the rabbit hole you get, the more you feel as though you have to do the extreme to get yourself out of it. I know that was my experience. It's like, I feel really bad, blah, blah, blah. So I do this extreme thing, which kind of messes me up in different ways. Now I'm like, I have to fix that with something else. That's like, you know, could be just as extreme or whatever. And you kind of dig yourself into this hole and then you feel really alone because it's like mainstream stuff doesn't really address the things in the way that you want to hear it. So you kind of can get yourself into some trouble there. Yeah. That's why I feel as though like coming up with some kind of foundational practices that at least you're getting a minimum, like at least you're getting a minimum amount of sleep or amount of food or amount of, you know, exposure to people or, or whatever. That's such a safer bet because health is, it takes time. It takes time to build health and you can lose it so fast. You can destroy your health so quick. It takes time to get these good habits going so that you have a reasonable improvement in health instead of having that quick fix of, I want to be better next week. How do I get there? If a dry fast, if a water fast gets me there in seven days, I'm going to get there in fucking two days because I did a dry fast. It's like, yeah. if you just ate well and went to bed for a week, you'd feel so good. Even if you got only marginally healthier and better, Yeah, it's more motivating because now you're just on the up and up, right? You're not like trying to get out of this crisis mode. But yeah, to your, I want uh, to avoid, yeah, to your earlier point, AJ, I, like I agree. I think um, when people are really sick, really desperate, they're more likely to do extreme things. And that's where I was at too. Like, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016, like my health was not good. And so that's when I did more of the extreme stuff. Now my mm-hmm. health is pretty good. So I don't feel the need to do extreme stuff. It's the small tweaks here and there and the right. small experiments. No two week dry fast coming up for you. I did a one week. No, I don't. I like fasting is great. There's a place for it, but it's, um, I feel like I'm for the most part past that. I, I like doing it. If I have a, a really long, you know, flight, like an overnight flight or something, I'll do it. I just feel better, but I don't, mm. I don't feel the need to do like a two week fast every year or whatever. Well, I think there's a distinction between people doing it because it feels good. It feels right. And they know their body. And then people thinking they have to do it. I have to drive fast once a week because Dr. Morris told me or something. <laughs> like, I feel as though people are just losing in touch with, their own bodies which is a problem yeah yeah i think uh i think the biggest rabbit hole uh is cleaning out the serpent that a lot of people get um worried about you know and they just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper who's the one i think the one guy flavors of light he's on he's on instagram it's just like he just keeps juice fat like i honestly i haven't seen his page in a couple months it hasn't come up it hasn't come up at all i don't follow him but like, I mean, there's a point where he was just juice fasting. Like it's all he was doing and just nonstop. And he's like, stuff still coming out of me. Like, mm. oh my gosh, like, why would I eat? It's not worth eating still. And it's just like, <laughs> I just don't know how, like how much deeper can you go? Yeah. It's just like, man, it's, I don't know. I just, I just didn't see it. it People opinion. get carried away. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. add to that. Yeah. I, I just think the rabbit hole, it's just you gotta, just gotta find a way out of it. You just gotta let go. You just gotta be free of it. Just got to yeah. find a way to enjoy life. So. so that was number four, never ending search. Number three sounds a little bit arrogant or dogmatic, but they just, they do it wrong. Like so many people do it wrong. You know, just be little things like you just see how much they're eating. It's like, Oh, I have, I have a banana for lunch. It's like, what you, that's like 90 calories. <laughs> like it's not going to work. Like they need, right. they didn't do enough research. They didn't um, experiment enough. They didn't seek help. They just kind of like, oh, I'm a vegan now, so I'll have a salad and a banana. Like, right. Guaranteed so, Josh, fail. what does it look like to you to do it right? Like some of the basic principles. Well, that kind of ties into my other points. But like one of the biggest things is you need to be eating enough calories. Like that's that's number one. Like just because you're eating more nutritious foods doesn't mean you're going to be successful. Like I, I actually think I don't think we discussed this before, but in my opinion, you're better off eating adequate calories from food. That's not that healthy compared to super inadequate calories from healthy foods. Like how many vegans are there that like, Oh, they eat a lot of mangoes and greens and the stuff that's, that's high in nutrients, but they're getting like 1400 calories and they're, they're just like wasting away and their eyes are sunken in and all this type of stuff. Like, no, there's people that are eating like 
fast food every day that are doing better than you because they're, they're giving their body the most important nutrient and that right. is energy calories. Right. You know? So that's, that's one thing. Um, it's going to yeah, any food uh, is healthier than starvation. Essentially. Yeah, ex exactly. For sure. Um, so that's part of it. just eating enough. And it, it kind of ties back into what I was saying before. It's, it's eating enough. It's eating foods you like. It's eating foods you're morally aligned with. It's eating foods that are affordable. Um, it's eating when you're hungry, you know, things like that. That's kind of doing it right. I, I'd have to look at a, an individual situation and I could give them feedback as to what they were doing wrong. But there is no, besides those generalizations, there's not one plan that kind of fits everyone's in, in terms sure, of specific sure. foods and meals and, and timing and things like that. Great. Yeah, I think that's great. Just because in the last, in our episode, uh, I, I did mention like getting enough diversity in. And it's funny because it is like, it's sort of like contradictory to the points that we're making. It's like, oh, eat simple. But then it's oh, like, oh, get enough diversity in. You know, you don't want to always eat so simple. Um, but like, I think you can still eat simple, but also eat diverse too. You know, like you can eat simple for two meals. And then if you have a diverse meal in the evening or something, or if you eat simple for three days, yeah. And then you eat simple for the first two meals and then the last meal, it's diverse. You know, it's just like, um, like there's ways of doing it. Um, yeah. And diversity doesn't have to be every day and every meal. You might yeah. like really like this one food and you eat it almost every day for a month and you kind of get sick of it. And then you eat something different for a month. Right. Like, in human nature, there's seasonality, right? It's like, you might yeah. eat a lot of potatoes in the fall and then none in the spring or a lot of right. berries in July and August, but then none in, in February. And I think that right. that type of diversity is totally fine too. And I think that's what there's like a misplaced hyper focus on like deficiency because our body's really efficient and being able to like recycle nutrients and like spend an yeah. amount of time on a certain food. And then you get exposed to other foods. Like maybe mm -hmm. you get higher fat for a little while or more nuts or whatever. And it feels though, like everyone is really, really uh, over analyzing that aspect. And like you said, they're not focusing on the main point, which is getting enough nourishment, like from Absolutely. the calories or, or whatnot. And, and just to add to that point, one time I added some foods into uh, chronometer, 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 whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I wanted to simplify it as much as possible and see if I could get enough nutrients. So I put in white rice, bok choy, and walnuts. And walnuts, I think, yeah. And maybe I, remember, I told you. So yeah. th those three foods, I put them in and I put for me, whatever, 2,800 calories. And I was basically covering just about every nutrient that I would need. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's way more important is getting those calories and, and not, right. not stressing too much about the specific nutrients. There's a few you should be maybe concerned with, but overall, no. If I'm being honest, that sounds pretty good to me though. Just white rice and bok choy and walnuts. There's throw a little bit of sauce on that and you're good to go. I mean, I can do that yeah, a lot. <laughs> I, I, I like those foods. Yeah. Yeah. Even though if I'm not mistaken, I think walnuts are like the highest nut, like the highest uh, nut and fat or the highest has the most fat out of, out of any nut. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also the king of the nut too. It's also the most nutrient dense nut. So it's I like almonds were the king of the nuts. I think you're. Mm -hmm. I think you should quiet down, little boy. <laughs> you're so disagreeable. <laughs> I'm more disagreeable than you for sure. Um, no, but um, yeah, actually, I have a. I, ha I got a. Uh, I don't know, a big bag of walnuts from Costco. I think they're, they're probably pasteurized. Costco. I wouldn't eat those. Here we go. Here, here we go. <laughs> X vegan three, two, one. <laughs> Worried about if it's raw or raw <laughs> cooked nuts. But I, I mean, I will say I think the raw nuts are better for sure. Um, but no, if I'm being, I, they might be steamed. I'm not. I'm not sure. Depends um, on the nut. I think like with cashews, I'm pretty sure you have to cook them. I don't think yeah. you can eat raw cashews. Yeah, like they'll say raw, but is it? I don't know. Um, yeah, I was yeah. Just certain nuts. That. Certain nuts, I think, can be raw. Other ones, mm -hmm. maybe not. We got two points left. Anything to cool. add to that one? Number three, doing it wrong. We got that covered. Okay. Number two, this is a big one. These are, these ones are, are more important as we get along here, go along. Uh, number two, they're doing it for the wrong reason. So I've seen this quite a few times where it's like, oh, I'm going to go vegan for my health. It's like, well, that's not why you go vegan. Like, as we said, veganism is, is a moral thing. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily a health thing. Being vegan doesn't make you healthy. Not being vegan doesn't make you unhealthy. Like right. I've actually talked people out of uh, becoming vegan because they're doing it for the wrong reason. It's like, I, we don't need another vegan failure. Like if your goal is to eat more healthy, <laughs> I love eat more whole foods. Like you don't have to go vegan. Right. No. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's awesome points. And it's funny too, because um, even people will ask me, uh, 
like, oh, is this food good? Is this food bad? Is this food good? And I'm just like, I mean, what makes it good or bad? It, it just really depends on, on how you feel about the food and how you feel eating it. Um, but yeah, I yeah. think, uh, like, I, I, I do believe there are, a lot, there are a lot of people who come in here for the completely wrong re- reasons. And we see right. that, you know, they see like they, they, they wanted to heal an issue, but it'd be different if they say that, hey, I'm doing this just to heal and then I'm out of here you know, but then you still don't, it's, you don't, if that's the case, you don't need to go vegan. Yeah. Right. You can just do, Oh, I'm just doing a cleanse. I'm doing a, a juice and fruit cleanse. You're not vegan. You right. Know? Because like so many people will build like clout, which I'm like so impressed with how they do it so fast and rapidly. And then those, they'll, they'll just go back to vegan, <laughs> you know? And then here's us over here. We have like no followers. <laughs> yeah. Or, but yeah, like, remember it, it's a moral thing. It's not necessarily a health thing. And it's not yeah, necessarily right. an environmental thing right. with environment too. It's like, just because you're eating vegan doesn't necessarily mean it's good for the environment. Are mm-hmm. you living in Alaska and you're getting like corn and bananas shipped from Central America? If you're in Alaska, you're pre- probably better off just fishing and, and eating local vegetables and stuff in terms mm-hmm. of environment. Right. right yeah good point yeah i think so with that go ahead I, I got another rant here so you go ahead no go ahead. please rant please I'm okay so like with the moral position it, to me it's like either you're vegan or you're not act like it yeah it, it's like you don't need this like oh i'm gonna do a um a 30 day believe in god challenge it's like no either you believe in god or you don't right. like act like it you don't need a, a 30 day challenge you don't need to talk <laughs> about it all over social media or the same thing it's like either you believe stealing from people is okay or it's mm-hmm. not you don't need a oh i believe that like stealing from people is bad so i'm gonna do a 30 day 30 day don't steal from people challenge <laughs> like no it's like live in alignment with your values right well it's funny because someone uh, a couple weeks ago was like hey Let's do a smoothie challenge. We can all post our smoothies online. We'll see who has the best smoothies. We'll do it for like 15 days. And I legit just said to this person, I said, Hey, you know what? I don't do that kind of stuff. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's I'm, not different. In, I'm not into challenges. <laughs> uh, uh, that's different. I think challenges are fine. Like, uh, you know. But like, but like, I don't know. I, I just, I just thought of it. So I said it. <laughs> no, I, I, get what you're saying. I, I think the challenges are okay, but it's like, if, if you're morally in your mind, vegan, then act like it. You don't yeah. need to do a challenge or you don't need to be like, Oh, I'm going vegan. It's like, no, you've been vegan your whole life. You just didn't realize it. Now that you realize it, start being consistent with, with your right. mindset, you know? Right. Right. Agreed. That's a good point. Um, yeah. I, I think this also brings up stuff too, with like um, doing certain challenges of like a vegan challenge where mm. they do it and um, they could even mess themselves up within those 30 yeah. days, you know, like people will do certain fasts or like fruit fasts and stuff. And, Oh, I did it for 30 days, but it's just like, okay, then what's next? Like, what are you yeah. going to do after that? Like you, like you have to find a, a consistent way of doing or eating and yeah. you can't I, just keep, you can't just keep like doing these fruit fasts over and over again and doing all this kind of juice yeah. fasting, like find a way of eating that makes you feel good. Right. Yeah. Like learning to well, eat before just always fa- like fasting, like people can fast and kind of, it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward, but they don't really know how to eat afterwards. And it's, it's one of the big challenges that I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see a problem with doing like the health challenges, but when you say I'm going vegan as a challenge, that's weird because it's yeah. a moral thing that, that yeah. shouldn't have to be a challenge. That's, that's either who you are or, or who you aren't. Yeah. Whereas like you, they, they, they won't last. Well, Josh, yeah, let well, me ask, let me ask you if someone has an aspiration, then they're like, they're like, I'm vegan. I want to eat plants. I don't want to eat animals, but they haven't figured out and fine tuned how to, how to eat yet. Maybe they haven't had the right education yet. Do you think it's still fine that they are calling themselves vegan while they're kind of eating at the end of the day, they eat some animal products because they just don't know how to make it work yet. Or do you feel as though like when yeah, they I, say, Hey, I'm going to try vegan for 30 days they're forcing it. Like, they're just like, if I starve, I starve. Like, what do you think about all that? Um, I think that's fine if, if finally they recognize that in their heart they're vegan and they don't want to cause any harm to animals whatsoever, but they're just, they're feeling challenged with the transition. In that mm-hmm. sense, if they just say, hey, like over the next two months, I'm going to phase out. I mean, my first meal, vegan only, my second meal, just eggs, and then third meal, a little bit of meat, but I'm slowly going to replace that. Like, I just don't feel comfortable eating meat anymore, but I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm yeah. going to transition. I, I think that's okay. It's like, Cool. maybe realizing that like drugs are harming you, but you can't just 
cut them off cold turkey. It's like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to phase it out. I know that it's, it's wrong, but too much too yeah. soon. I know I'm going to fail. I, I'm okay with that. Because, um, because I, there was, there was someone that I, um, I dated years ago and before we ever dated, she was vegan, like maybe five years before that. And she just made the mental, she's like, I'm vegan. Like, I just, yep. I don't want any animals to be harmed or anything. She just ate, was eating lettuce for dinner. She was a kid, 12, 14 years old. She didn't know what she was doing. She knew she had the heart of a vegan, right? Yep. And she, she just couldn't. And her parents didn't know what they were just, they let her do it. And they didn't know how to help her or anything. And she got mega sick and messed up her hormones and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I feel as though, like, I think that the vegan heart is like such a powerful thing. And it's a great thing. Yeah. But also just keeping in mind, like, we have to just work out some of these finer details because if right. not, you know, who's, they're not being looks, served by it. I feel as though right. it's such a, when you get to combine the ethics with the health, you have like the Holy Trinity, because now you're an example and you love it. And you're not like, you know, having a, a lot of um, regrets and things. And it's just like the Holy Grail, in my opinion. Yeah. And then that looks bad. That girl's like, you know, I, I, I was a vegan in my heart and then I tried it and I failed and I got so sick. And then people hear that and then they're like, oh yeah, like it doesn't work. I can't do that. It's like, no, she was doing it very wrong and she just didn't know better. So not to insult yeah. her or anything. She was a kid and she was yeah. following her heart, which is extremely important that she did that. She just didn't have the right guidance, didn't have the, the resources and the knowledge available to her to make it uh, successful or at least a lot more likely to be successful. Yeah. And like she was a kid, but here's the thing. There's plenty of people that don't put so much thought into things as the three of us do. Like we're clearly in a different category of the average person where we fine tune detailed all this stuff. Like my mom, for example, my mom's 55 and she was having kidney stones and, you know, she tries to like eat her way and things like that. And I was like, mom, like the, we need to get you to eat healthier because that inflammation is making where all the pain happens. So she, uh, she's like it's in so much pain. I'm like, if you want me to help you, this is what you're going to do. And I just put her on vegetables and starches. And within the first day she was out of pain. I said, you have to do it for two weeks. It's going to be so boring, but she didn't know what to do unless I literally hand fed her the information. Yeah. Right. And, um, otherwise she would, even if she wanted to, I don't think she could have done it, right. but well, 50, she's pain free. She only did it for two weeks. She's pain free. And it, you know, this stuff can really work. And what's yeah. funny is all the carnivores would probably say all the oxalates are going to destroy those kidneys. And it's like, well, within friggin' 15 minutes of not eating animal products, she was so much better. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing is uh, 55 years of living a certain way and not really being aware of these different ways of living. Yeah. It would be really hard for those people. They need someone to really spoon feed them. Yeah. Right. Cool. Good. So that was number two, doing it for the wrong reason. All like right, I said, one. If, 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 if environment is important to you, you don't necessarily have to be vegan. If health is important for you, you don't necessarily have to be vegan. If, Harming animals to you is a problem. You're vegan. Act like it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, number one. So this is the Dude, most important down, thing. Man. And <laughs> I love it. I love it. This <laughs> We're going to do some like vegans right versus carnivore boxing matches. <laughs> you know, what's, what's interesting though, with that is like, I wish we could go back to those days where there was like the tension between the vegans and the carnivores. The last couple of years, it's been more like, pandemic tension and i'm more in alignment with some of the carnivores based on how they see things compared to some of the vegans so yeah. <laughs> right. honestly i probably would be too <laughs> yeah yes, like I, I agree i feel like there's some vegans i've kind of moved away from just because we see things so differently lately and some carnivores that i'm like oh man you're my hero kind of <laughs> um, yeah well i mean i agree with what you what you with what you say so i mean i'm sure i would be in agreement with what they say <laughs> Such a follower MP. Uh, so yeah, that was number two, doing it for the wrong reason. People need to be really clear why they're doing it. Otherwise, it's you know they're gonna fail if they don't have a, a really clear purpose. Right. But number one, the last one, this is the one that I I've seen the most. And like I said earlier on, um, when I became vegan, I started watching videos of ex vegans. I wanted to see what went wrong for them so I could learn from it. And I wanted I wanted counter arguments. I like counter arguments. And what I saw basically every time was they weren't eating enough calories. Like the stories were always the same. There's that guy on YouTube, uh, Speria or Spree Ridge, like the um, oh, Swedish yeah. guy, <laughs> yeah. like long blonde hair. And he would interview people and it was always the same story. They would say, oh, you know, I went, I went vegan and uh, it started out, I, I was feeling better. Like my skin got better and I had more energy and better mental clarity. And yeah, things were going good. But then like after a couple months, I started getting cravings and I was just like, 
getting skinny and like I couldn't sleep it's like yeah you're not eating enough like that's <laughs> right every, like every time it's the same problem basically yeah. I, I, there's <laughs> almost no no examples that I've seen where where people fail for really legitimate reasons like there's right. the odd, there is the odd person that does have a health issue or, or something like that but like nine times out of ten it's just they're doing it wrong and that's usually they're not eating enough calories and right. it's difficult because they don't understand that like you can't go from eating burgers and fries and milkshakes and stuff to eating like salads and rice like you're just not going to be able to eat enough volume like your body's not used to that and so i don't think counting calories is a great idea all the time but when you're transitioning like that it's an absolute must like you have to it's good to know yeah, so know. so it was vital to my transition i feel as though like especially the first couple of years it was the reason for my success is because i would eat a minimum of like 3500 calories i think and really paying attention to that. But the, here, here's the thing. If I tried to do that with just starch, I don't think I would have had that good of results. You know, I had my first two meals were like smoothies and things to keep everything flowing and hydrated and banana smoothies and stuff. And then my meal at dinner was like a big, heavy carb rich meal. My, my question to you, Josh, is what do you have to say for the people out there who are vegan and they want to eat enough calories or they want to eat enough nutrition but they're having trouble handling the amount, not just the volume because they're transitioning from denser foods to, to, you know, less dense foods. So more volume, but more like for me, I came from understanding the calories, but I still got pulled into lesser calories, you know, entertaining other ideas simply because my digestion became so off and I couldn't handle, like, if you gave me a rice meal, I'd feel 30 times crappier than if you gave me, uh, you know, some kind of, like cleaner meal that's lighter in in calories but i, I would yeah, feel like so salad. much better so i feel as though the people who are under eating they're doing it's intention that sometimes they work themselves into a corner that were following what feels better so i don't know if you have any because you said the main thing you see is people aren't eating enough which i agree i think in general that's the case but i feel as though a lot of people that go back to meat it's because for them it's so much easier to digest they don't have to have all of this fiber and all of this food and and etc do you have any points on that yeah that's a big thing actually i mean that's part of the adjustment. If you're going from eating a low fiber diet to a high fiber diet, your digestion might not be great early on. You might see some improvements, but you also might see some, some additional problems you didn't have before. And the thing with like eating carnivore is there is no fiber. If you're getting like bloating and, gla and, and gas and stuff, that's generally from fermentation. Fermentation comes from the fiber, the carbs basically, right? Yeah, which well, is which sense. is that which is a natural pro. In my, in, in, for my understanding of it, it's it's naturally going to happen. It's just like yeah, it's it's a, it's a part of eating a carbohydrate rich diet. But like, but I think there's think it's wrong. But I, but think, I, th I think it's natural. I think there's people who've been vegan for a while who still are are seeing those issues. I mean, I would have my own perspective of like they're dehydrated, so they're not going to process yeah. their food as well and things like that. But I feel as though it's not only a transitionary problem. I feel like there's vegans like before I was ever vegan. I remember being bloated for like three years straight and yeah. you know it could have been improved for like with the few different steps being taken but i feel as though the decline in calories in my view of i've been in this game similar to you since 2014 2013 my view is people's digestion just becomes pretty weak to where they can't handle the amount of calories that they need and then what's easier is to drink some grass-fed milk or have yeah. some eggs and it seems as though they get to just break apart those calories a little simpler and now they feel like oh man it was such a wake-up moment blah 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 when really yeah, yeah they were they were eating, were not eating enough but maybe they had a hard time handling what it would take yeah. to eat enough yeah and that's understandable that's that's an important thing too and there are there are several things that um can create that yeah number one like you said is hydration i've noticed that with myself like digestion is just better when i'm hydrated but as far as like the bloating and gas and stuff like that. I think a little bit is normal, but I don't think we should ever really be getting bloated. And so if you're getting bloated, it can be, like you said, beyond just the transition. If you're one, two, three, four years into eating this way and you're still getting that, that's more of an issue with maybe food combining or even more likely your gut microbiome. So you probably have low stomach acid, you probably have low enzymes, um, dysbiosis, candida, problems like that, because you shouldn't be having uh, that type of bloating. 
And for myself, it's like, yeah, I had, I had terrible digestion before. It's a lot better now, but I still, on occasion, I do get some bloating and stuff. And it's more just specific foods or specific food combinations. And I know for me, and that's one of the few things I'm still working on is like, I know my gut isn't perfect. I know that I've had low stomach acid. I know that I've had, you know, just weak digestive fire to put it in like Ayurvedic terms. And so that's, that's it. Like what works well for me is eating the low FODMAP foods because the high FODMAP foods are the ones that are more fermentable. And so if you don't have perfect gut health, the high FODMAP foods are, foods are more likely to cause fermentation and therefore uh, gas and bloating and things like that. So mm. you can do that, what's, but what's best is figuring out how to really restore your gut back to normal. But if, if you're yeah. like me and you've taken broad spectrum antibiotics and, and things like that, it's, it's a journey for, right. sure. for sure. So, but in that, I've noticed that with myself is sometimes I'll eat really healthy healthy in my opinion and I won't feel great and then I'll kind of have like a vegan junk food meal and I feel better and I don't get the bloating from the junk food and it's because yeah. it is it is more processed and that fiber is broken down and it's actually easier to digest in that sense so if someone's feeling that way where it's like they want to eat a high volume of whole food um, plant-based foods but they just can't handle the volume and, and they just get bloating and stuff number one is adjust and have a little bit more processed food and number two is, is figure out how to restore your gut. And uh, like I said, that's something I'm still working on. So I don't have all the answers. I've made very big improvements, but uh, still experimenting with that. Yeah, I actually had that uh, issue when MP was coming. He stayed with me a few months ago and we were going out and having like vegan foods and we got like vegan cheesesteaks in Philly and stuff like that. And then the last day he was here. Yeah, we had like organic russet and sweet potatoes. And I felt way worse than eating the junk food because yeah. for whatever reason, my gut just being a little off and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's really, it's really interesting because, you know, people, I feel as though people are just viewing things as cheesesteak bad, vegan cheesesteak bad, like potato good. But in a lot of cases, it could be a lot more beneficial that they actually swapped it around and, and kind of listen to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. What they're especially, craving actually, especially starting out, you know, if, yeah. if those foods are giving you digestive problems, go with a, a little more processed food. You might need to do the more processed food anyway, because it, like the calorie density is just easier to get, but yeah, That's, you got to experiment it, with that. Even with that agent, I were just talking about this the other day too, about um, like, if I wanted to get <clears throat> like 900 calories of potatoes, you got to eat a, a lot of potatoes. Yeah. But now, whereas if you just eat, even if you eat like maybe two thirds of a vegan pizza, you, you, you can maybe get 900 calories from that. I'm not necessarily sure. Maybe, maybe if you dip yeah. it in like some barbecue sauce or something. <laughs> um, Even like but, half a pizza is probably almost a thousand calories. Yeah. So um, it, 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 it potentially might be less volume than potatoes. I don't know. For me, the potatoes just seem like they've been like really heavy recently. Um, but even still, like if I take a, a black bean burger that, and usually they're probably, they probably run from like 150 to 200 calories. And I don't know. Let's say they're, let's, let's say they're 150 and I take two of them and then you have two pieces of bread on each and the, the pieces of bread, let's say they're hundred calories each. I mean, right there, you have a thousand calories. You have basically, um, no, you don't, you have like 700, you have like 700 calories right there. And that's just with two. That's what, that's what like two sandwiches, you know, two black bean burgers with, two, with four pieces of bread. That's like roughly 400 cal That's like roughly 700 calories. And the difference in volume with eating that compared to just eating like a ton of rice or, uh, a huge salad, like the volume is so less, but the, the caloric density is so high. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's almost like, what's your, like, what's the best option? I guess like, it really just depends on you, depends on the person. Um, but it's just really yeah. interesting discussing like sort of the calorie densities behind certain foods, you know? I find, I find I have to eat a little bit of processed food in order to like maintain my weight. And so it's, it's kind of find, finding that middle ground where it is processed, mm. but it's still pretty healthy. So especially when I was back home in Canada in the summer, I was making a lot of waffles, but I would make the waffles with organic oats that I would blend into flour. And then I would take bananas or plantains and mash them up. And then I would pour in some soy milk or almond milk or walnut milk or whatever. Nice. Like to me, that's still very health, healthy, yeah. but it's yeah. processed, which allows me to eat more calories. Right. And the fiber is broken down a little bit. So it, it's kind of like, you get kind of get the best of both worlds and I, right. I like it tastes good. And then I can add different toppings and stuff. And that worked really, really well for me. Well, yeah, in, the win Go ahead. in the winter, I was doing uh, waffles and I would put like black beans on the waffles and then syrup. <laughs> it was like, I'm getting my, <laughs> get my resistant starch in there. <laughs> well, wow. it's funny because AJ 
probably thinks I'm an idiot for asking this question, but I, I asked oh, yeah. him before the, uh, our, our talk we had today. And I said to him, well, I said like, dude, if you have a smoothie, like it's technically a processed food. Like, would you consider a smoothie a processed food? And, and it is because yeah. you're just adding a bunch of different ingredients and you're processing it. But if you were to sit down and actually eat every little ingredient and like, I don't know how you would eat the powder, but like, I don't know, just like toss the powder in your mouth. <laughs> with some water <laughs> like if you're actually doing it you might not be able to sit down and eat all the food that you're putting into the into the blender so it is a processed food but yeah um it, it's still technically speaking might be raw so like you could still be a raw vegan and yeah. but you're eating whole food but like something what's up like it's processed but it's like made of whole foods yeah so it's like yeah yeah it's so, like yeah you could say it's a processed food but people are also gonna think like oh it's like a cracker now like no it's not yeah no, right it's or right, like right. A cookie so or something. It's, it's just blended whole foods you know yeah right so i guess like technically speaking yes it is still whole food because it, the everything's still retained um but it's still processed <laughs> like i don't think you can't argue that it's thing, not right? so it's 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 processed it's like a green juice is processed but look it's made out of vegetables it's like <laughs> but but i guess the difference so if you're making a smoothie and you're putting in whole bananas and whole berries and whole spinach and stuff those are all whole foods and you're consuming the whole food it's just that you processed it whereas yeah. if you're making like carrot juice orange juice celery juice not only have you processed it but you don't have the whole food anymore because you've left behind some of the pulp and the fiber so it's right. it's a little bit different there right so in my opinion yeah i mean it's it's usually optimum to like eat the whole food right. even if you process it a little bit as opposed mm -hmm. to you know taking right. part of it right but that's why but I, I, think... I mean good like celery juice and and um carrot juice <laughs> and stuff are still great but you are stripping away some of the fiber you know right and nutrients well i don't know if you guys heard this but Fiber is actually the downfall of mankind. <laughs> no, pa paprika, John is Rose. paprika is the downfall of mankind. <laughs> I, had a, I had a guy come into the shop I used to work at, this nutrition shop, and he was telling me all about how fiber was the whole reason why his health had gone downhill. Yeah, and he, he spent like an hour. In, yeah, he was just spending an hour on how like if we actually all just ate meat all the time, we all would be healthy and things like that. And it's just like... Yeah. Yeah. I'd say the, the biggest problem is government and central banks, but that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> Not fiber. <laughs> How about those gas prices? <laughs> One thing to consider too with, with meat is you kind of have to look at that like from a sustainability point. Like, sure, maybe grass-fed beef is great, but imagine if 7 billion people were eating grass-fed beef every day. Yeah, no one's doing it. Like, who's doing it? Like, not many people are doing that. Well, I mean, just think about a cow, like in order to like, from when the cow gets pregnant to when the, the cow that's the child that's born is ready for slaughter, it's a three year process. And then even after three years, you know, you have to feed it for whatever, right. two and a half years. Right. And then when you kill it, it's only 50% edi edible. Like, even if that's the healthiest food, we can't do that. Another thing to take, in, take into consideration is you have to like live in a way that if 7 billion other people live that way, the world would be okay. Right. Because if, if, if you know, if, if you're eating grass fed beef for every meal, it's like, we're going to have to get rid of 6 billion people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you're, 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 you're kind of being selfish if you're doing that, even if it is best for your health, even if it is mm -hmm. tastes good, whatever, take that into consideration. You're not the only person on the planet. Right. Cool. Well, uh, the last point we made here was eating too many calories. I think we kind of, or eating, not eating enough calories. I think we kind of got a little off topic, but <laughs> still, I, that was, that was epic. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I do just think that it's definitely a common trend with mostly all the ex vegans that um, they weren't eating enough or they did some crazy fast uh, yeah. and then they didn't feed properly and then they got sick and then they blamed veganism. But like, it's in my, in my opinion, veganism isn't the reason why people failed. It's their it's something own more fault. specific. It's yeah. just their it's their own fault. Yeah. Specifically them. It's what and they just, did. Yeah. And just missing little things like, for example, iron. A lot of people have low iron, whether they're vegan or not. I've had low iron. And so some people might think, oh, I'm vegan and I have low iron. My doctor said eat meat, therefore I have to eat meat, therefore I failed at vegan. It's like, no. 
it's not the only way to get iron. Like, how do you think your meat gets its iron and when it doesn't eat meat, right? right? So for me, it's like, I have to make an adjustment. I eat bok choy. Bok choy is very high in iron. If you mix it with a vitamin C source like tomatoes or lime, it's very highly absorbable. So it's like, oh, I have low iron. Rather than break my morals, I'm just going to find a different solution. And I did, right. and it's fine. And mm -hmm. I like bok choy and it's cheap and it's easy. So nice. I don't have to kill a cow. I can just eat the bok choy. Like <laughs> people just aren't willing to look hard enough or right. experiment or- Well, there's an appeal know, to authority. You know, I feel yeah, as though exactly. we have like an Doc independent mind, which not everyone yeah. has as easily. Right. And most doctors, that's going to be their response. Your iron is low. You need red meat. Yeah. No, bok, bok choy is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I just think, <clears throat> yeah, it's great. You remind me of Plant Proof, Josh, because when I listened to that episode on Ritual, he was like saying a lot of these things and going through the actual micronutrients and like vitamin C, helping with iron absorption and stuff. And um, I feel as though that we could do an awesome episode about covering and addressing some of these things. Like I have so much to say about fat and protein and carbs mm -hmm. that I feel like it would make for a really awesome episode. Yeah. You know, it'd be good for that topic too. I'm not, I'm not necessarily the expert on nutrients and stuff, but maybe like Chris Kendall would be good. That type of stuff. Like he, he seems to understand those from what I've seen and on a raw diet as well. Pretty cool. Well, MP, you want to start closing it out? <clears throat> yeah. I just want to, to close, to close it up here. I just want to say that people need to start taking responsibility for their actions and stop blaming other people and stop blaming other, their, um, whatever their, uh, well, I guess their labels on why they failed. Um, but even just yeah. in, even in normal life, start taking responsibility for what you've done. Yeah. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to admit, it's okay to make mistakes. It happens. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, you know, it's like your, your marriage failing and then you blaming it on the idea of marriage. It's yeah. Like, right. no, it, was, it was probably your fault. Oh, the relationship didn't didn't work. Yeah. yeah. Like it, oh, it, marriage it, is, marriage is stupid. It's impossible. No, it's yeah. like, it was you. Yeah. So it was it's you and your partner. So it's definitely, it's, 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 it's a two way, it's a two way, uh, process here and yeah like veganism might have flaws everyone has flaws we all have flaws but you can't just blame veganism for all your mistakes you know you gotta you gotta start blaming yourself take responsibility and, and not to your mistakes it's it's okay it's it's gonna be good it's gonna be it's gonna be all right it actually makes you a better person by doing that it makes you stronger it makes you be able to hand, handle more in your life so yeah definitely and that's what i found too is you know standing for that has made it easier for me to stand for other things that i believe in Nice. You know, going against the grain and getting some criticism. Now I can handle it better for other topics, as you oh guys have maybe noticed. That's great. I have yeah. noticed. <laughs> I hashtag me too. Cool. What's that? Awesome. I said hashtag me too. Uh, <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, that's um, all right, guys. Yeah, that's all I have. Uh, awesome. It was great having you on again, Josh. Yeah. Um, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was it was awesome. We had a really Hopefully awesome talk. people. Hopefully people find it useful. Yeah, I hope so. I it useful. Yeah, Josh, always, it's always great talking with you. I feel as though we always create some kind of awesome dynamic, the three of us. So yeah. I'm looking forward to actually re-listening to this myself. I'm looking forward to seeing what people think out there. And then I'm really looking forward to having you on a third time. It's always <laughs> great. That'd be great. Yeah, no, we have so much in common and similar thinking on a lot of topics so. and if you're in chattanooga at the same time you and i are gonna get lunch together and i'll probably make like a hungry people video so mp can feel left out so. <laughs> sure, what if i'm there <laughs> go go for some vegan sushi and I'll, I'll show the world how much i can eat yeah get a viral video going for us <laughs> vegan eats awesome. 100 sushi rolls <laughs> cool all right guys well i really appreciate everyone watching this has been an awesome episode i want to remind you guys to stay open-minded do your due diligence do the research find out what is best for you keep in mind that it is about the calories but also go by your hunger drive listen to what your body wants don't give in to every craving because cravings aren't necessarily what you need to follow but find what naturally feels satisfying to you and i want to i want to remind you to stay uh, consistent because consistency is really going to help in determining what is working and what isn't, you know, be patient, but st also stay hungry. Keep, keep a drive and fire alive in you so that you continue to do this work and find out what works best guys. Yeah. Josh, any final thoughts? No, not really. I think I covered just about everything. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thanks Josh for coming on. Uh, AJ said it all at the end there. So uh, that is MP and Asian from the Hungry People podcast. Stay up, be great. Always keep it 100, baby.